Welcome everyone. Today we're talking beta tank mates. I've done a top four beta tank mates in the past and that was much more towards smaller aquariums and things like that. And the reality is I just don't really keep them in small aquariums. I normally mesh them into community aquariums or build out planted tanks of at least 20 gallons or more. So if you're looking for smaller tank mates, check out our smaller uh, tank mate video. But this one we're gonna focus on lots of stuff that you can put with it. The first one I've got, coolie loaches. Basically, bottom dwellers, stuff that's gonna hang out down real low is gonna be safe because your betta is hanging out up top and maybe gets a little mopey and he pouts, but if he's in pouting mode, he's not gonna chase down coolie loaches. Coolie loaches are gonna help clean up after that betta, especially if you're feeding frozen blood worms and all that stuff that's gonna drop down to the bottom. They look cool, they're not too expensive, they're real hardy, they live in the same water parameters. They're just a really great fish to have with them. Next up, I go to a bigger category. Most tetras, honestly, green neon tetras, neon tetras, uh, ember uh, tetras, you've got cardinal tetras. Most of the tetras that aren't nippy, and what would be some of the nippy ones? That would be like uh, serpe tetras, that would be like uh, your uh, skirt tetras or glowfish tetras. All of those are a little bit too robust. But any of the kind of slim-lined, um, more reserved type tetras work out really well. And if you've got, you know, a 20 long or a 20 high or larger, you've got room for the school to go back and forth. You've got room to get enough of them so the betta wouldn't single out one. And in, on average, the tetra shouldn't be going after the betta's big fins if they're getting enough food. Now, if there's you go on vacation or, or you got the random bad tetra, that can happen. But overall... Not so much of a problem. Next up, I've got Corydoras. Pretty much every type of Corydora will work. Uh, you know, real popular small ones would be Pygmaeus, Habrosis. Uh, then you've got things like Pandacories. Then you step up to like Bronze and Albino and Sturbi and Julii. All of those work out really well, just for the same reasons that um, loaches or coolie loaches do, and that's because they hang out at the bottom, kind of out of their swim space, not the same territory, and they're going to eat up a lot of leftovers. So, you know, don't treat them just as leftover fish, though. Definitely feed them maybe some wafers or extra frozen bloodworms so they get fed really well. Uh, but in general, they add a lot of spice to your tank and um, help keep it a little bit cleaner, if you will, as well. Next up, we've got rasboras. Lots of rasbora types from the nanotypes of chili rasbora, exclamation point rasboras, to things like pork chop and uh, um, rasbora hets and emerald eye rasboras and um, like the neon green rasboras, all of those. I would, I would avoid maybe some larger ones like the scissor tail rasboras, some of the stuff that gets a little larger. But again, get groups, you've got it you know, in that 20 gallon or more, they can school back and forth, they mind their own business, the betta does his thing, you've got a great looking display, fills all those needs. Algae control, or Placostomus, Autosynclus, uh, Hillstream loaches, all of those typically do well. You know, when choosing a Placostomus, maybe you don't choose the giant common, but you choose like a bristle nose or a rubber lip, or a clown pleco. Um, you can also do them with fancies too, zebra plecos, leopard plecos, uh, or I mean leopard frogs. You can do them with, uh, you know, a wide variety, even the meat eating ones, because the temperatures are the same. Now you still got to make sure they get fed, and you got to make sure there's enough room, and there might be some cave structure, all the things the pleco would need. But they can cohabitate the same tank. They typically don't take up the same territory, and nine times out of ten or more, it works. Next up, this is kind of an oddball one. Uh, it's a killifish. Norman's lamp eye killifish. They got this bright eye that'll look at you from across the room. <clears throat> they school across back and forth. And uh, they they can go in that 10 gallon with the betta, but a 20 or more works out well. And it's one of the few killifish that can kind of go with bettas. Next up, we've got shrimp, but not the shrimp you're thinking about. You're probably thinking cherry shrimp, a mono shrimp. Those can be done, but bettas will prey on them usually. So what I'm talking about is Singapore or bamboo shrimp and the vampire or wood blue wood shrimp they have the fan hands where they're grabbing food like this and yeah you got to use fine foods in the water column but they're big and robust and typically a betta will leave them uh, leave them be and it's fun to watch them post up maybe on a sponge filter or a plant and just catch food 
and they're as big as the bed is, so great addition. Next up, we've got Endler's Live Bears. Now, a lot of people recommend guppies. I don't necessarily recommend it. It can be done, but guppies with the big, long, flowy tails swim pretty slow, so Endler's have a lot of color to them, smaller tails, more nimble. They can get out of the way of a, of a betta. Now, the thing that you need to know is that betta is going to eat endlers. It's going to eat the baby endlers. So when you get males and females, they're having babies. It's a great food source for the betta. The betta will chase them down. He will eat them. He will get a good snack. He will also be more laid back because he's already chased down some fish and won't chase the other fish. Now, that's not for everyone. Some people can't stand seeing another fish eat another one, but... We, if you've ever had endlers before, you know, you start with two and pretty soon you have 200, 2,000. And so it's kind of a, a nice thing to have someone in there snacking on some so you don't overpopulate way too quickly. My last suggestion is snails, specifically Malaysian trumpet snails. They go under the gravel or the sand or whatever. They can get out of the way if the, if the bed is harassing them. Whereas some of the other snails like nerites and ram's horns and um, mystery snails, they can't really get away from it, so if that betta gets a taste for their antenna, they're just going to get harassed to death. So I really like the Malaysian trumpet snails. They can go under. Uh, assassin snails can also do that, but Malaysian trumpet snails are great cleaners where assassins want to eat lots of food uh, and then other snails. So I don't usually mix the two, but uh, yeah, snails can be a great addition if you don't already have a good bottom crew going. So those are my... My top 10 betta tank mates for larger tanks, which I think if you haven't done a bigger tank with uh, bettas in it and made it kind of more of a community style, you should really try. You see a lot different behavior out of the betta. You see a much more stable system. And usually you get a lot more enjoyment. Uh, I do realize the betta hobby of having, you know, I've got 12 bettas in, you know, five gallon tanks and that kind of stuff is kind of a, a Pokemon, got to collect them all. But also, you know, maybe if you just have a community tank and you're wanting a showpiece fish, a betta is a great addition a lot of times if your other fish can cohabitate. So, thanks for watching.